Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS on PUBG 2023. So we're going to start with uh, the Windows optimization and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So, not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off, and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottlenecks. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's gonna show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue, but if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2%, 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game. So we're going to start with basic display mode. Super important to play full screen. I had a lot of issue with borderless, with stuttering, so go with full screen. Resolution, make sure that you're playing your native. So 2K if you have a 2K monitor, 1080p if you have a 1080p monitor. For the lobby FPS cap, I really recommend to maybe lock it at 60 FPS. Don't unlock it for none. You will just create more like thermal issue in your computer. In-game FPS cap, I just play unlimited. I want like the less input lag possible. Uh, but again, if you have some struggle with your thermals, I recommend sometimes to just lock your amount of FPS with the amount of Hertz of your monitor. So you're playing on a laptop with a 60 Hertz monitor, just lock your FPS at 60. Uh, because sometimes when you unlock, you will have issue with throttling on your CPU or GPU. You can start stuttering. So just lock your FPS. After that, let's go to advance. Uh, the first one is render scale. Make sure that you're at 100, just one for one. By default, mine was at 70. I didn't understand why. It's pretty trash. Don't do that like really go down downscale or upscale for a first person fov the more fov that you will have the more you will lose fps so i recommend to start at 90 do the old setup look at your fps if your fps are fine just go a little bit higher with your fov anti-aliasing i recommend very low first of all for visibility uh, anti-aliasing in this game is very blurry and also you will gain a lot of fps if you compare ultra to very low you can expect an eight percent boost Post-processing, pretty much the same thing. Just go with very low. You will have a nice percent boost, a 9% sorry, a boost in your FPS and also a better visibility. Shadow, this is pretty much the most important um, graphic parameter in this game. So if you go ultra to very low, you can expect 16% boost. So this one is huge. For texture, if you have 6 gig of VRAM and more, you can play at ultra. If you have 4 gig, go with high. 3 gig, go with medium. And less than 3 gig. Uh, if you have 2 gig, go with low. And if you're very limited with your VRAM on your GPU, go with very low. Let's go back to ultra. So effect, I recommend also to go with very low. Not a huge impact on your FPS, like when you just look at your FPS. But it's more, it will stabilize a lot your FPS. So when you will have an explosion, you will not drop like from... 20% of your FPS. So this is to keep always a constant FPS when you're playing the game. Foliage, I recommend to go with very low, 7% boost in your FPS and also a better visibility to see enemies. View distance, this one is really important. You want to see further in front of you. So I don't recommend very low or low. Start at medium, look at is it okay with your FPS and stuff. And if it is, go even at high. Uh, it, it, it will reduce a lot your FPS, but it's very important. In a battle royale, you want to see uh, your object in front of you. Sharpen, I recommend to disable. V-Sync disable, you want the less input lag. If you don't like uh, tiering, you can definitely use technology like FreeSync or G-Sync. Motion blur, go with disable. Better visibility, you don't want to use that in any game. And for the DirectX version, you have two different API. 
I did a lot of testing with this one. So if you have an Nvidia card, my result is always the same. DirectX 11 is the best one. And if you have an AMD Radeon, go with the Ant Ant one. It seems to be very good, like 15 to 20% boost in your FPS. And DirectX 12 is not very good on any card. Uh, th that's a bit weird for me, uh, the Radeon and Nvidia part. It's like uh, they re-optimized the game for the console because the performance were really bad. So that's why they did the end ends, but it's like it's just work on the AMD stack. So they didn't like improve it for Nvidia. So that's why Nvidia seems to be uh, the best one seems to be the 11 one. But anyway, if you have a Radeon car, use the end ends for sure. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my PUBG uh, 2023 guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.